and they are not able to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. 324,000 elderly persons, you say, are under social protection, the yes. cash transfer program. Yes. Out of how many, generally speaking? Who? You know, the, the, the average population for uh, older persons who are 65 and above is about 1.2 million. So you can see that we are already taking care of almost 30%. And because, of course, we have to look at the resource base of our country, um, we raise the floor for social protection to 70 years. And at 70 is when the vulnerability is really great. And that is the starting point for us as a country, considering you know the kind of resources we have. So uh, with that, you can see we have already been able to register over 500,000 additional uh, older persons uh, that you know were falling on that bracket of, of 70 plus and that really feel they need to be uh, provided for this care. Because again, it's a, it's a voluntary scheme. You don't have to register just because you're 70. If you feel you can take care of yourself, children are there to take care. Uh, if children can decide their parents should not be put on social welfare. You know, it's voluntary. But for the majority, you know, the majority of older persons who have no one to take care of them, they are neglected. Um, you know, they, they cannot be able to no longer work and until they learn to feed themselves, those are the people who uh, the program really uh, goes out for mm -hmm. and, and, and largely targets. I remember uh, prior to the August 8th general election, you did yeah. uh, register some elderly people across the country yes. uh, so that you put them under that particular program. Uh, during that exercise, how many did you register and when do they begin to benefit? Because there are so many and thousands who are watching were saying, listen, uh, Isa Rikali did registers and uh, nothing's coming forth so far. Oh, no. The, the, the promise that the government made will be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Because one, there's a budgetary allocation that was uh, provided for, for the cash transfer or for those additional numbers. So there's money. 6.5 billion was released for the first half for this uh, financial year, starting from January. Mm -hmm. And there's additional funding that has already been provided for, for next year's financial uh, budget. So this is something that is going to happen. We have registered them. The next process now is to have them registered at the bank because the ministry has now registered and we have the database which we are now going through. Uh, we will then give that to our service provider uh, who will then register the elderly people, you know, take their biometric fingers, you know, ensure that they have put them in the, in the system, you know, consistent with how banks register their customers because these are their customers. And once that is done, they will be carded, which means they will all receive their Inua Jami cards, which are really also their bank cards. And they will then be able to go to the bank uh, from next year, uh, early next year, and get their money. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we are still in that process. Uh, I think the, the next main milestone is now to uh, register them at the bank. And, and once that is done, they will receive their cards and they will begin to enjoy uh, their cash transfers. And uh, we'll be talking about the bank shortly, but let's just stay there. The question of uh, 324,000 that uh, you registered so far in this country. Uh, and uh, I remember the president uh, prior to the August 8th general election talking about every elderly person receiving 5,000 shillings. So the current one, the, the amount stands at 2,000, the 5,000 no, begins I, I, in January. I think uh, really the correct, uh, the president obviously did not talk about 5,000. He talked about 2,000. Because even in this current uh, program, the 324, it is 2,000 shillings that we pay per month. But sometimes because it is paid after two months, then they receive 4,000 shillings. Uh, sometimes it's not logistically possible to pay every single month. But after every two months, sometimes we do pay the 4,000 shillings. So uh, it is actually 2,000. And uh, it is a lot of money for somebody living in the rural areas, uh, struggling to meet their basic needs, 2,000 goes a long, long way to help them to fend for themselves. Because, you know, a lot of us in towns imagine what is 2,000. But you go to the rural areas where, you know, you, you come face to face with uh, uh, poverty and you realize that uh, 2,000 actually does help them to eat, to some of them uh, even house themselves because some, some, some of the houses these older people live, you know, are completely deplorable. You will find, you know, the roof is leaking, things like that. So we have noticed that uh, one of the priorities for these older persons when they receive the money is to, one, ensure that their housing is safe, and which is important, because that also means that their health is, is, is secured. Then they are also able to buy some, some small, uh, you know, little livestock, which is able to meet their basic needs. They can be able to buy a kettle and get milk. 
be able to buy chicken and get eggs because we're also talking about their nutrition, which is very important when you know, you, you, you're talking about ensuring that we extend their life expectancy. Uh, just staying with the, the question you were talking about the president, and uh, I remember before the election, can you authoritatively say he never talked about a review to 5,000? Yes, indeed. The, and even if you look at the budget, we are talking about 2,000 shillings per month for an elderly person. Not 5,000? Not 5,000, no. Five, well said. Let's talk about the question of uh, banks, because in the past there are those who have uh, argued that uh, cartels have taken over and that uh, as much as you've list the 2,000, which is considered minimal anyway, uh, that this money ends up in uh, wrong hands and, and uh, that the process of registering in banks, uh, especially this being vulnerable people, is uh, complicated and that's where cartels take over. Are you privy to <laughs> this kind of That uh, is situation? absolutely false, mm -hmm. absolutely false, because... Uh, you know, it is an open process. These things are done in complete daylight. You saw the process when they were being registered. We never received a single complaint uh, from any of the elderly people because it's straight. You walk into a social development officer's office, they take the biometrics, they register, questions are asked, the ID is produced. It is as simple and as straightforward as that. The only other point of interface is perhaps the chief who will then direct the older persons to our offices where the registration is done. And in fact, by the way, uh, the ministry went further and reached the wazes at their sublocations. So our officers, because we, this is a, a process that is digitized, moved in with their laptops down to sublocations, and the chiefs would mobilize the elderly people within the localities to come to the, to the chief's office and be registered. So we were able to reach all of them. And you can imagine in such a process, I mean, it's, it's very open. And then it, when we go to the bank, you're talking about private sector corporates mm -hmm. who have got you know, their own uh, ethics uh, and integrity issues around how they do their work. So it, the, the, the banks treat the elderly people the way they would treat you, the way they would treat me, if I walked into the bank mm -hmm. to open an account. So I can assure you that uh, in fact, by us digitizing this process, by us allowing the banks to be the ones uh, you know, providing the service, we have ensured that there is absolute accountability and integrity mm -hmm. in the process of disbursing funds for Inua Jami, and we have had absolutely no complaint. Where you perhaps may have an issue is where an elderly person is very vulnerable and they have been asked to choose a caregiver and they've chosen a caregiver believing that the caregiver will be honest, then the caregiver maybe shortchanges them. But even then, the older person has the right to drop that caregiver and choose somebody else to take their money on their behalf. Mm -hmm. So I can assure you that uh, we have nothing to do with cartels or anything. In cash transfers, it's an absolutely open and transparent process that, you know, accountability is upheld in the highest mm -hmm. levels. Yes. Let's talk about the national policy of uh, older persons. This was uh, an aging, of course, that was adopted yeah. by the cabinet in 2009. How has that streamlined the social protection uh, aspects that you are offering? I think the, the policy, you know, one, you know, helps us first as a country and as a people to recognize the importance of our older persons. And, you know, to say the, the, the truth that, you know, all of us are in the path of getting there. Uh, we are all going to be what our older people are today. So recognizing first, bringing that strong recognition uh, of the rights of older persons, which of course is very much in line with the constitution. Uh, the constitution, I think it's section 43, articulates very properly uh, the rights of an older person. Because the way we were going as a community, because of the erosion of our traditional cultures, the elderly people are beginning to be completely forgotten and left out. You become old and suddenly you're suffering from a complete sense of low esteem and, and a complete sense of feeling that you are just a burden to people. Uh, because of uh, the economics of the, of the world today, because of you know, people migrating to urban areas to look for work and completely forgetting that they had parents they left at home. Mm -hmm. So this was a group of people who are completely uh, and gradually beginning to be forgotten, which you know, I must say would be a curse for us as a country if we forgot our, our older citizens because we are a product of uh, what they have done for us uh, because they came before us. So the policy brings that recognition and of course brings to bear uh, that burden for what the state can do to alleviate the challenges faced in old age and, and the state, I mean the various agencies of government being sensitive to uh, the issues to do with older people, even in terms of health. And you know also that the president 
uh, also uh, declared that we are going to provide NHIF cover for all the older citizens because one of the challenges of old age is health issues. Where does this muse, where does this mama go? And you know, when you think about it, these are people who in their prime time worked hard to build our economy. How do we forget them when they are now old and vulnerable? Who then takes care of them when they are sick? So in line also, as we roll out the, 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 the cash transfers for the older persons, the government is also rolling out NHIF uh, cover for them so that we can take care of their medical issues uh, in old age. The policy also recognizes, for example, that we may have to uh, have institutions where we provide uh, safe places for older persons to live. Because we also recognize that among some communities, our older persons faced challenges of um, being rejected, sometimes being burnt mm -hmm. and killed, of course, in the, in the pretext of uh, witchcraft. But when you really look at it, it's because people want to take over their resources. It is because people find them to be a problem. And so uh, you can even see through social protection People are now even valuing them there, the old people, rather than killing them because they become the sole income uh, provider in a typical rural poor household. So we have also been able to, one, bring back their dignity in line with the policy, and we've also been able to bring back their acceptance of older people into the community because they are now contributing in their own way. And of course, when their dignity and esteem is, is, is uh, lifted, it means that they are also able to now contribute more meaningfully to society. So rather than fold back and, and fall into a state of pity, the older people are now coming out and engaging with the younger generation because we also, the policy recognizes the need of ensuring that we close the intergenerational gaps uh, between the older people and today's generation because it is important to have that linkage, the intergenerational linkages, because of transfer of knowledge mm. and wisdom uh, over generations. And so that is really the essence of uh, the policy on older persons. When we talk about the question of NHIF, um, we are talking about 324,000 registered and uh, against a population that you said uh, roughly is 1.2 million. Yes. So when you are offering NHIF, are you going to limit it to the 324 or the, the entire population, 1.2? No, actually the older persons who are now being registered into the cash transfer are all going to be eligible. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we have found older people who say, I don't need the 2,000 shillings because indeed I can take care of myself. But what in fact I need from government is just the NHIF cover. And so the Ministry of Health, uh, because that falls within that ministry, uh, is going to simply just take the, the, the database that we have and, and uh, use it to register the NHIF uh, and register the beneficiaries into the NHIF. But again, because I said there are some 70 year olds who don't want to be put on social welfare. They don't want to be put on the 2000 per month, but they are interested in NHIF. So those will be registered uh, into NHIF. And I trust that if they went into a Huduma Center, they would just be automatically registered again in line with the government policy to provide uh, proper care for our older citizens. Mm -hmm. You did indicate the question of identification of uh, the most needy uh, elderly persons or senior citizens as it were. And uh, you did indicate the question of our uh, scientific methods that you, you, you attend to them depending on needs basis. So how do you, what are some of these yardsticks you consider uh, to say this is more needy than, A is more needy than B, B is more needy than Okay, f first I must say the whole selection process is now irrelevant and, you know, is obsolete in, mm -hmm. and because we are not going to be applying any selection. Mm -hmm. We are simply going to be, uh, you know, bringing on board everybody who has met the 70-year-old threshold. But previously it was necessary to select because we were only supporting based on whatever budget or uh, financial resources were available. Mm -hmm. So then, of course, you want to look at who is the most needy who is most deserving to be uh, provided for uh, state care. And uh, that is where the whole process of a selection criteria uh, applied. Uh, but for now, uh, it is not important anymore. It is any Kenyan citizen who has reached 70 years old and feels that they need to be taken care of by the government. They, are, they have that uh, right to simply register mm -hmm. and, and become beneficiaries of uh, state support. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so as we bring this to an end, uh, Madam Pierce, apart from the cash transfer uh, program, 
Do you have other deliberate programs that you, are, you have that target the elderly or senior citizens in this country? What we have done uh, using the cash transfer program as the basis mm -hmm. is that we have put the older persons into beneficiary welfare committees. So we are bringing them together as beneficiaries of cash transfer so that they co can continue to talk about uh, initiatives and ventures that can be beneficial to themselves. Uh, you know, one, it is in encouraging the culture of saving amongst them. And more importantly, even just bringing them to talk about how they themselves can contribute back to society, mm -hmm. uh, you know, through that kind of platform. So our social development officers at different uh, sub-counties uh, across the country are, are, are working to put them in groups. And, you know, once you have put people in groups, then there's a lot that you're able to uh, help them to realize. But I must say, as a country, the other important thing is the right of education to older persons. You have seen older people, 80s, 90s, going to classroom to read. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that was not there before. But, uh, you know, there have been some significant reform that has ensured that older persons are not denied the right to education if they feel that they want to go back to school. Mm -hmm. So the society, uh, through various government interventions, has opened up the space uh, for older people. We are also now working on um, really bringing some uh, coherence to volunteerism in this country. And part of the reason, and, and the volunteerism policy, policy was just uh, passed last year by cabinet. And if you look at volunteerism, it also looks at how do we tap into volunteerism am amongst the older persons so that we can encourage them to get out and continue to, to meaningfully engage with society and uh, contribute to a social and economic uh, development even at an advanced age. Mm -hmm. So th there's various uh, platforms and various uh, issues that we are looking to promote the welfare for persons, uh, for older persons. This year, for example, as we celebrate the International Day for Older Persons, we are recognizing and tapping into the talents of older people. Mm -hmm. Older people also have talents. And so, um, you know, being able as a country, and of course tomorrow the celebrations will be led by His Excellency the President, to recognize that fact, to raise that awareness that older people are welcome to, you know, use their talents within society. That, I think, goes a long way also to promote the welfare and the well-being of older persons and to help them feel very comfortable to continue to contribute and participate mm -hmm. in uh, the country's development. Mm -hmm. I just saw a tweet from one of our viewers asking uh, or wanting me to ask you the question of monitoring and evaluation. That's a whole unit in some of these universities. Yes. And uh, when you talk about these funds, have you put in place mechanisms where you can monitor their usage and evaluate so that perhaps you come to them about what are the existing gaps and how do we deal with them to make sure that their usage is even more effective? I think in the, in the area of social studies today, one of the most researched, one of the most evaluated programs is the cash transfers because it is a fairly new phenomenon, particularly in developing countries. And so I can assure you we, are subject, we subject ourselves and other uh, development partners and friends subject the cash transfers to a lot of monitoring and evaluation. But one thing that has come out consistently in all the monitoring and evaluation reports we have done is that the cash transfers have truly uh, gone a long way to improve the livelihoods of older persons. We've also been able to see that uh, through the injection of resources into some of these very poor and very rural towns, we have seen a multiplier effect mm -hmm. in terms of being able to create a more robust economy in some of these very rural areas. Because what you're now seeing is an older person can enjoy credit in a shop, which means also that because you have empowered several number of people in a certain locality to have an increased purchasing power, it means for any entrepreneur there, any business person, any person running a kiosk, the base of people who can afford to buy has increased. And so there is more money moving around in, the, in, in, in those local economies. So the, 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 so far out of the monitoring and the evaluation reports and the research that we have done, and not just in Kenya, but across various developing countries, there's a strong confirmation that there's a strong correlation between um, cash transfers and social development in terms of promoting social cohesion as well and promoting peace, by the way, because, you know, we are also bringing down poverty. When there's an old man who can provide, or old lady who can provide food for a household, which also has younger people living in it, you bring stability within that community. So it has proven that, and it has also proven, as I have said, that you can actually be able to promote and boost 
uh, economic growth at a very at the very macro level micro levels and of course that translates upward uh, to the national uh, overall national economy mm -hmm. Yeah. If we had time, we could have talked about uh, the gaps uh, that come, that emerge out of that evaluation, but in the interest of time. The celebrations tomorrow in Kajiado. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Uh, what should we be looking forward to during those celebrations? I think for tomorrow's celebration, we will simply just uh, be uh, out there with the older persons of Kajiado particularly, and I hope the rest will join us on television, although we are having celebrations at the different counties uh, as, a, as a ministry. But we will be there to celebrate truly uh, the older persons who came before us and are the reason why we are where we are, and really to make a call to all of us as Kenyans to take that day and that, uh, you know, as, as an opportunity to reflect about our older people. Reach out to your old uh, parents, to reach out to your older grandparents, reach out to your uncles and aunties who are older and remember them on that day. Because I can assure you, they are usually feel a very forgotten lot. So let us remember them and also use this as an opportunity as families to come together and think about how you support them, you know, in a more long-term way. But uh, really it's a moment for us as a country to celebrate our older citizens. And so the national celebrations are in Kajiado. Do we also have uh, simultaneous celebrations across the country in other parts? Usually we, the, mini, the ministry will have uh, different activities running in a smaller scale in, in various counties across the, the country. And over the week we have been having all sorts of celebration. We had a church service at All Saints Cathedral and various other activities because it has been a week where uh, as a people and led by government uh, we have taken time to think about our wazes. Thank you. Thank you for getting time to be with us today. And uh, hopefully uh, we should be coming uh, down there in Kajiado uh, to celebrate today, Larry Parsons. And uh, thank you for the good job you're doing for uh, senior citizens in this country. Remember, the International Day of uh, Older Persons will be marked tomorrow. And in this country, the celebrations will take place in Kajiado. And uh, the theme for this year is uh, stepping into the future, tapping the talents, contributions, and participation of older persons in society. Uh, so make your way to Kajiado and uh, you can celebrate the senior citizens in the country. I've been speaking to the Social Protection Principal Secretary, that is uh, Susan Mochache, that is uh, under the Labour Ministry and uh, she'll be leading the celebration. You'll be in Kajiado in person, I want Yes, to indeed, I will be there <laughs> and I want to welcome all of us yes. to join us uh, and join His Excellency the President who will be uh, our chief guest. Thank you very much for getting time to be with us. My name is uh, Martin Wanton. On behalf of the entire production and technical crew, we made this a success. Enjoy the rest of the programming, and let's do this again tomorrow, beginning 6 a.m. That is in the morning. See you then. Bye-bye.